Hey everyone, you may have heard about Italy's recent elections where a woman named Georgia Maloney won a majority of the country's vote and will now be Italy's first female prime minister. As you would expect, everyone celebrated the election of a strong boss woman to lead the country for the very first time in the Italian Republic's history, right? Right. The last time Italy was led by a far right politician, it was World War II and his name was Benito Mussolini. The thing is, she's also on course to become Italy's first far-right leader since Benito Mussolini himself. Fascism expert Ruth ben Ghiat points out in The Atlantic, women like Maloney are protected by patriarchy because they are often the first to support the fundamental pillars of male power and privilege. Maloney's party slogan, God, Fatherland, Family, celebrates those very pillars of power. Some worrying stuff there. No, no, not that one, no. <laughs> no, that's not what happened because the woman who won is a pro-life, pro-family, pro-God, pro-free speech, anti-woke conservative. Ever since, the far left state media has been spewing accusations that Maloney is, of course, a fascist. And everyone should be very concerned that democracy is under attack because <laughs> they lost. Not to be left out, CNN partisan hack Christiana Namampour decided to make a complete fool of herself on her own show by asking the Italian ambassador to share in her conspiratorial fear mongering. But first, let me take just a quick 30 seconds to tell you about this free coin offer from unitedwestandcoin.com. Here's a fact for you. Florida is reigniting debate after it rolled out don't tread on me license plates earlier this month. Drivers in the Sunshine State can now order don't tread on me license plates, complete with the yellow and black image of the Gadsden flag from the Revolutionary War. The new version of the don't tread on me flag is the United We Stand gold challenge coin. Try, review, and inspect the United We Stand coin with your own hands risk-free for 60 days simply by going to www.unitedwestandcoin.com or by just clicking the link in the description or pinned comment. It's free. Just cover the shipping. After entering your details, you'll receive your United We Stand coin to your doorstep in just a few short days. How should we all be looking at what's just happening in Italy? I mean, we all know that Italy was the birthplace of fascism and her party's been accused of having roots in that movie. I think this is... All right, so I'm just going to kind of comment on this as it goes, but I always find it fascinating when people like Amman Poor, they stretch and they reach as far as they possibly can to make some sort of a connection to fascism or something. Like, have you ever heard these people ever once suggest that anything on the left was somehow connected to Marxism or communism, even though that we know these things are? BLM's a great example, which had widespread support from the media, but BLM had Marxist roots, had communist roots, used communist symbolism, which was then used at the 2019 DNC convention. If you go back and watch that, they actually use communist symbols, but you'll never hear Christiana Namampour suggest that that's dangerous or that's scary or that we should be worried about that. And another thing you never hear from folks like this or from the media or from anybody really is when left-wing governments are elected, you don't hear this same sort of uh, concern that maybe they're too far left uh, and looking back to history and seeing what far left governments have done. You never see that. This is the result of a very democratic process. You know, there were elections, uh, the coalition, uh, where, you know, the um, Giorgio Meloni is actually the leader of the main party. They got a very solid majority, uh, probably the Italian people. So I think, you know, we respect that. It's democracy functioning. Exactly. It, it's democracy functioning. And that's why, if you ask me, the thing that we should be worried about are people like Christiana Namampour, who are supposed to be checks on power. So they're supposed to be the fourth estate. But instead, what you see them doing is uh, setting up narratives to protect their party's power, to pr protect their ideology's power. There was an election and the right won. The left lost. That's just how it is. And in fact, she won a majority of the country's vote. So, I mean, isn't that by their own standards as democratic as you can get? But we're talking about people I I've joked about in the past, but I think it's serious. These people on the left and the Democrat Party and the Democrat state media, they either believe or they want the public to believe that democracy literally quite literally means that democrats are in power democrats are in power thus it is democracy i mean that's dumb i mean the slightest bit 
<laughs> of uh, a sentient thought should debunk that. But apparently people are buying into it. And I just feel like that's what we're seeing here because if the, in the midterms, if Republicans do well, for the next two years after that, the media is going to be accusing the Republicans of being a fascist threat. If they win the election, then the fascists will be winning. And that's why Biden, you know, started off calling his political opponents fascists. This seems to be the favorite tactic of the left right now. I mean, you saw it from Biden calling his opponents fascists. Justin Trudeau did the exact same thing to his opponents during the trucker protest. Vladimir Putin does the exact same thing to justify his actions in Ukraine. He calls Ukrainians fascists and, and Nazis. So I know that you're a diplomat and not a politician. Um... But I do need to try to figure out how we should all be looking at it and whether we should all be, you know, worried and scared as we were talking to Senator Leahy about the backsliding of democracy. Let me just play for you then. <laughs> the backsliding of democracy. You see, uh, when, when their opponents win and the left loses, that's the backsliding of democracy, even though it was democracy in action. Let me just play for you then the words of an Italian politician, former Prime Minister Matteo Renzi. I was against Giorgia Meloni. So I, I'm not the best friend that we grew up together in politics, but we were, we, we are, and will be rival always. At the same time, I think that is not a danger for Italian democracy. Uh, she is uh, my rival. I, I'm rival. We will continue to uh, fight each other. But the ideas are now there is a risk uh, of fascism in Italy is absolutely a fake news. That's hilarious. Like, I'm amazed that they would even put that on the show. Like, the the uh, her rival, uh, her political rival just said that it's fake news to say that she's a fascist or that there's any threat of fascism. And yet that's what Christiana Nanamampur has been. Uh, that that was her, that's her whole claim throughout this interview. And that's the whole claim. You see it everywhere throughout the media. Believe that, that it's fake news? I do believe that. As I would say, I mean, it was... Uh... You know, our, our, our people voted and they, she was elected. Also, I mean, she was, of course, you know, a party. Um, also, if you also consider the very, very statement they've been making before even the election, let's talk about uh, Russia, for instance, they've been very supportive of the Italian government uh, actions, you know, to support uh, Ukraine. Um, so, yeah, I don't, see any, I don't see any danger at all. So I think uh, rather than linking it to the fascists, I would actually connect that to the fact that, as I say, there's 40, 45% of the Italian electorate, with, of course, some swings from one election to the others, who is generally conservative. And there you have it. I mean, he, he's telling her right there that they're not a fascist party. It is a conservative party and that it's a conservative party that a majority of the country identifies with and wants to lead the country. But again, this just shows a very good example of why it actually is the left and the Democrats, their media and all these people who are an actual threat to democracy in the way that most of us mean that, that we all get a voice. We need things like the electoral college in order uh, to make sure that a, a big chunk of the country still has a voice and that not just a couple you know, states on each coast are controlling everything throughout the country. That's something that Democrats on the left want to get rid of. They want to abolish the Electoral College. They want to get rid of the filibuster. And then they want to stack the court on top of that. I think that if uh, Republicans win in, 20, uh, in November here, that we're going to really see that rhetoric ramp up. For the next two years, they're just going to drumbeat that in the hopes that they can somehow keep their grip on power. <laughs>